We're going to get to the word, and I'm going to get out of the way. If you would stand. And I'm be coming from the Second Corinthians chapter 4. Second Corinthians chapter 4, verses 17 through 18. And I'll be reading from the New King James Version. That's 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 17 through 18. I still hear pages turning so I can wait. Amen. Here begins the reading of God's word. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment is working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we do not look at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen, for the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. I need to read that again. For our light affliction which is but for a moment, is working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we do not look at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporary. Hallelujah. But the things which are not seen are eternal. The word of God. For the people of God, blessed be the name of our God. You may be seated in the presence of Jesus. I would like to use as a subject, this is just a momentary affliction. This is just a momentary affliction. Nelson Mandela once stated, and I quote, I am not what happened to me. I am what I choose to become, end quote. Charles Spurgeon once stated, and I quote, the furnace of affliction is a good place for you Christians. It benefits you. It helps you to become more like Christ. And it is fitting you for heaven. End quote. The Bible says, God says in his word in Psalms 34 and 19, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. I've come to encourage the body of Christ on today. And all I want to tell you, don't lose heart. Never give up. I know you may not fully understand what's happening, and you're sitting there trying to figure out this entire thing, and you're saying, why me? How am I going to get over this, and how am I going to get out of this? People of God, I want you to hold on. God wants us to know that he is in the midst of us. <laughs> and he told me to remind you this is just a momentary affliction. I need you to stand on the word with me. When we go to 2 Corinthians 4 and 8 and the verse 9 says, yes, I know you are troubled on every side. I know all about it. But you're not distressed. We are perplexed, he says, but not in despair. We are persecuted, but not forsaken, cast down, but we are not destroyed. Don't you know? He said, tell them I always have a plan. As a matter of fact, my plan began even before you got into the situation. He told me 
to tell you, go back to Jeremiah 29 and 11, and I need you to meditate on my word, for I know the plans that I have for you. I know what I got already down the pike. You just don't see it yet, but I got a plan. For I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to do what? Prosper you and bring you not to harm you, and plans to give you a hope and a future. I really like the Apostle Paul because I, I, I look at his life and I said, my Lord. The Apostle Paul had many, many hardships. He faced stoning, shipwreck, imprisonment, and worst of all, he was rejected by his own people. But even with his opposition, he was determined to bring the message of salvation. He was determined to preach and teach the good news. He realized that there was a need for people to come out of the areas that they were in. And, and I'm talking about come out of confusion. Because the enemy only comes to confuse you. People don't want to hear that I can be saved. Somebody's probably saying, but you don't know me. I don't need to know you. I know my God. And I know that he can change your life around if you would just give him the opportunity. The Apostle Paul was in Corinth and, and he said, there's a, a need in this, in this region. So by any means necessary, I've got to complete my assignment. I don't know your specific assignment in the kingdom, but what I do know just because, and I need you to hear me, just because you proclaimed Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, opposition is either here, it just left, or it's on its way. I, I, I'm telling the truth. Just because you said, God, I love you, I trust you, you are my Savior. You are my Lord. I want you to know, I got to tell you the truth. Opposition is either here now, it just left, or it's on its way. But only thing I need to tell you, and I need you to put your hand on your chest, and I need you to say, I won't abandon my calling. Oh, you didn't say it like you meant it. Put your hands on your chest with all the hell that you're going through. Put your hands on your chest. I won't abandon, I won't abandon my, calling my calling in Jesus Christ. Come on, put those hands together and give God glory. <laughs> Not going to abandon. I don't care what. Come on. Oh, Lord. What I know Greater is he that's within me than he that is in the world. And I'm not backing up to no demon in hell. Do you know who you are? Do you know whose you are? I tell him, bring your breast shot. Y'all think I'm kidding? Because I recognize that the plan and the trick of the enemy is to shut all of us up. He wants us to back down, back up, and go hide. I believe God's word. And I'm going to stand on it till it's the last breath in my body. Let me tell you something. The enemy is a liar. He is the author of lies. So he comes and gives you all these afflictions and distractions. What do we do? We back up? No, we don't back up. We go forth in prayer. God, I trust you. God, I bless you. You are my God. Don't shut your mouth. 
yourself now. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Any blood washed people in the house, if you've been washed by the blood of the Lamb, open up your mouth and give God some glory. You're playing with it. You're playing with it. You're playing with it. Give him some glory. He messed with the wrong one. He messed with the wrong one. He messed with us. He don't know who he messing with. Don't back down, y'all. Don't back down, y'all, because we ain't seen nothing yet. In the midst of calamity, God is going to strengthen you. Somebody got it. I said, in the midst of calamity, God is going to strengthen you. How do I know it? His name alone is powerful. Proverbs 18 and 10 says, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. It's a fortress. The righteous run into it and we are safe. Then I looked at Matthew 5, 11 and 12. It says, blessed are ye. When men shall revile you, that means mock you and persecute you and say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Because you belong to me. That's why this is happening. But verse 12 is the, the verse that I like. He said, rejoice. <laughs> rejoice. Rejoice. <laughs> Rejoice! Oh, hallelujah! Rejoice! 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 And be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. Rejoice! Come on, people! Rejoice! Great is our reward in heaven. And then he said, tell him, you wasn't the first. You ain't gonna be the last. For he said, Remind them, for so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. This ain't nothing new. It's, it's really nothing new under the sun, right? I had to get that, y'all. I wasn't always here, but I thank God. And then I looked at Romans 8 and 18. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. What? For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. For I reckon that the suffer of this present time, oh my God, are not worthy to be compared. You worrying about this right now and this, 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 and that? He said, don't worry about a thing. Wait till you see what I've got in store for you. Go to 
to sleep, sleep well. Because I don't slumber nor sleep. So you go to sleep and sleep well. Go to sleep. Lay your head on your pillow. Pull your comforter up. Say your prayer and go to sleep. Ain't no need of worrying. Ain't no need of complaining. I wasn't always there, y'all. But he pushed me into this area with affliction. Because I needed to get to where I needed to get to. Because he needed to help me to understand how he will undergird in the midst of the storm. Y'all playing. Y'all playing. If you think that you're going to be a Christian and everything is going to be beautiful, A flowery bed of ease. It's a lie. But nobody really told us that, right? They didn't really tell us the whole truth and nothing but the truth. Paul told them the whole truth. When he went to Corinthian church, he told them, just because you have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ, this, 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 and that is going to happen. He didn't sugarcoat it. But he reminded them, and I come to remind all of us, teach the word. Preach the word. In season and out of season. When they want to hear it, when they don't want to hear it, preach the gospel. And you know what? There's no respect to person. I don't care who it is. Your family member, they not say, you must be born again. Oh, but um, Elder Hodge, I come to church every Sunday. So... Are you born again? Well, Elder Hodge, you know I've been a, a preacher for 25 years. I met a preacher 20-something years ago. And when the Lord began to minister, when he was done, there was a call for salvation. Y'all want to know who ran to the altar? The minister. Just because we're all up here, that doesn't mean that we're all saved. And I'm not talking here. I'm talking about across the platform or across the world. It does not mean anything. And it doesn't mean anything that you are here every Sunday. How are you living? How I, am I living? Because I, I got to check in first. God, I don't think I've done everything right. God, I don't think I said everything right. God, I think I went someplace that I didn't need to be. Y'all better talk to me up in here. You've got to make your election sure. Very sure. Yeah, okay. Paul explains to the Corinthian church how this all looks. He said to them, yes, we live under constant danger of death. Constant. Because we serve Jesus. So that's just our life. I see us as a bull, bullseye. Boop, boop, the enemy. Boop, I'm going to try to get her. Boop, I'm going to try to get him. Oop, take him back. Get, get him back where you had him before. Boop, boop. That's what I see. But we need to be faith walkers. 
God is going to work it out. No, y'all don't believe that. I said God, not Sharon, God is going to work it out. We, he said we live in the face of death, but we're not concerned about ourselves. I'm not concerned about me. I'm concerned about souls. That's why I preach what I preach. That's all you preach? Yeah, for the most part. You know why? Because for years I was in church. And I wasn't saved, but I was in church, singing on the choir, clubbing at night, singing on the choir, drinking at night, singing on the choir, hating my sister and my brother. Y'all better come. I'm going to call it all out. I ain't scared. I'm going to call it all out. We up in here, up in here, but are we saved for real, for real? Did you speak to your brother to your left today? Did you speak to your sister to your right? Did you go the other way so when you saw her you wouldn't talk? How I know this? Been there, done that. It's getting late in the evening. And the sun is truly going down. He said, we live in the face of death, but we're not concerned about ourselves. I'm concerned about you and your salvation. And I'm not just talking to preachers. I'm talking to teachers. Exalters. Missionaries. Usher, all of us, is, I'm talking to everybody. And guess who I'm talking to first? Me. But God wants us to know, stay the course, y'all. Don't give up. So when I started to look at this verse, I said, I need to really understand this light affliction and this moment, and it's working for us. I said, okay, God, let's walk through this together. It says, for our light affliction, and I want you to write this down. It's light because it's of little weight. It is easily managed. It is easily carried, and it is easy to bear. Because I'm in it. I need to go back again. It's a light affliction because it's of little weight. It's not heavy as you think. It's easily managed. It's easily carried. And it's easy to bear because God is in the midst. An affliction is a tribulation or a problem or a conflict. But God said, let them know it's only for a moment. He said, it's only going to be for a short period of time. It's going to be brief. It's going to be deciduous. It's going to be fleeting. And it's going to be transient. Okay, you're holding on to that? Because the enemy is going to come and, and tell you, this going to go on forever and ever. He's a lie. It's a momentary light affliction. Okay. And then he said, it's working in us. I said, what do you mean it's working in us? He says, it is producing. Ah. Oh, it's producing. He said, I'm working something out of you so that I can bring something into you. <laughs> it's producing. Okay. What are you producing? I'm producing me in you. Because I got to get you out of you so that I can get into you and I can produce and make you what I've called you to be. So it is producing. 
It is working something out of us to bring something into us. I said, okay, I'm walking with you. He said, okay, you won't look the same when you come out of this. Okay, y'all don't believe me? You know what a metamorphosis is? I see a caterpillar, and I see a caterpillar. I see Central Park, and they on the bench. Y'all know, right? And the caterpillar is moving. After a while, there's a metamorphosis. And the caterpillar comes out as a butterfly. God said, that's what I'm doing. I'm working it in you. Because when I'm done from working on you, you're not going to look like you went when you was in this mess. You're going to come out and look so different. And when it's all said and done, I'm going to get all the glory. Because that's my purpose, that you will glorify and magnify me. Oh. Oh. <laughs> it's a momentary event that is about to switch. It was meant to destroy you in the natural and in the physical. Now I'm about to give you something that's going to last forever. There is a weight of glory. And he said, this is really, this really has substance. It's valuable. It is significant. The weight or the burden that you're carrying now is going to be so short-lived. But when you get to the place that I want you to be in, you're going to be a true worshiper. Okay, I'm going to say it again. When I get finished with this light affliction, you sitting down in service so, so sadiddy, The preacher got to say, raise your hand. He said, when I get finished working and producing what I got to produce, you're going to run into my house and give me some glory. Oh, y'all, 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 y'all playing. They still playing, pastor. They playing. They playing up in here. I was glad. <laughs> When they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Somebody going to come in here running. Y'all still too dignified for me. But that's why David didn't care because when he went through his light afflictions, he came out and he began to praise God in an undignified manner because he recognized I should have died in the affliction. But he didn't die. He didn't care who was looking at him. He began to praise God in an undignified fashion. Yeah. Uh-huh. We're talking about God. We're not talking about man. How dare we come in here dignified? If you just begin to think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he has done for you, you come out of your dignified self. You'd open up your praise gates. You give God some glory. You pick them up and put them down. Pick them up and put them down. You lift up holy hands in the sanctuary and begin to bless our God because he's a good God. It's a momentary event, and it's about to switch. It didn't kill you. It made you stronger. I said it didn't kill you. It made you stronger. It made you love God even the more. It was meant to kill you. It was meant to shut your mouth. But the Bible says in Psalms 34 and 1, I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. Oh, magnify the 
Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. It didn't kill me. I'm yet breathing. I'm yet living. I ain't crazy. God said, tell him. Glory is coming out of this. I said, glory? What you mean, glory? He said, they're going to praise me. They're going to honor me. They're going to see my manifest presence. Uh, they're going to go beyond the veil. Huh? They're going to get in my presence. Uh, because in my presence, there's fullness of joy. And there's pleasures forevermore. They're not going to be dignified no more. people in here I said are there any redeemed people in the house won't the redeemed of the Lord open up your mouth and tell the enemy I've been redeemed I've been redeemed I've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb the persecution the affliction, the heartache, the tribulation has allowed God to come in and work some stuff out of us so he can begin to dwell in the temple. He said, I'm not dwelling in no nasty, filthy temple. So I got to work out what I got to work out. So you got to go to the offense of this affliction. Oh, my God. So he said, tell them, don't focus on what you can see, but focus now on the things which are not seen. For what you see now is temporary, it's momentary, but the things you won't be able to see are eternal. I said, somebody needs to know, watch God begin to shape you. He's remolding us. He's putting us back on the potter's. I said, he's putting us back on the potter's wheel again. Because that affliction, there was some lumps and some bumps in it, right? It wasn't smooth. So he said, I got to put you back on the wheel. And I got to spin the wheel. Oh, God. Oh, God. I'm, I'm preaching to me, y'all. You know that? I'm preaching to me. Because he saw some lumpy stuff in me. Yeah, the preacher woman. Yeah, me. I'm being real. So, yes. We got to go through this momentary affliction. But you got to hold on to this. It's temporary. It's only for a season. But when God get finished with us, I said when God get finished with us, the weight of glory is going to be so heavy. And when he's, you know what he's doing, saints? He's preparing us for when we get to glory. Because when we get to glory, I'm going to take off my crown and I'm going to put it at his feet and I'm going to worship him and adore him and praise him because there's going to be a weight of glory that rests on us. The altar is open for someone Who's going through a temporary affliction? The altar is open for someone that doesn't understand how am I going to get out of this? 
When is it going to be over? Will I be able to endure? Surely you will. Because God is in it with you. The altar is open. For somebody who feels like they're going to faint under the affliction, God said, all you got to do is trust me. I'll never leave you nor forsaken you. But you know who I'm talking to? I'm talking about those who walk up right before me. The altar is open. Glory be to God. For someone that says, I'm tired, I'm tired, God, I'm tired. And I realize that I can't make it without you. He said, why don't you just lift up your hands and surrender? Not just with your mouth, but with your heart. Lift up your hands and tell him, God, I surrender. Because I'm tired. But the altar is also open. For somebody who might say, I never heard the gospel message preached before. I've been in church all my life, Elder Hodge, but I never heard the gospel message. The gospel message is you must be born again. What do you mean? I can't, I have to go back into my mother's womb? No, 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 no. Born of the spirit, not of the flesh. The altar is open for somebody who wants to give their life to Christ today. You've been doing it your way long enough. You're so confused because the enemy is the author of confusion. So he's telling you, don't you dare move from that seat. She's not telling you the truth. I come to tell you, I'm telling the God's honest truth. You must be born again. You must give your life to Christ. You must turn back from this evil world because the enemy just wants to kill, steal, and destroy. But he said, I've come that you might have life and have that life more abundantly. Thank you, Lord.